Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with Sampler Quilt Sunday. I'm working on my small stuff quilt. I left you very discouraged over this flower block that I was trying to make, but I knew if I put it away for just a little bit that I would come back to it and I would know what to do. And I think I pretty much fixed it, at least to my liking. First of all, if you're not familiar with this series, there's a playlist link down below. I am trying to do a sampler quilt, one after another. I'm on my first one. This is only the fourth episode. And when I am done this one, my plan is to do a sampler quilt that people can follow along. You can't follow along with this one because uh, I don't know how to tell you what I'm doing. When I left you, I believe I had maybe four different pieces or had I attached it yet? I can't remember. But whatever I did, I didn't like it. So I had the idea of making the background narrower in places, which I did, and that was very easy. That's before I had all this stuff around it. So I started making some of them narrower just by pinching them on the back side and stitching. So it made lines, which I'm happy with. So I did this one, there's a line there, there, this one, this one, this one, this one. So that made the flower smaller and it made extra space. So I put in another petal and then another piece of background. And then it fit perfectly. And I think that the petals show more now that there's not quite as much background because some of these wedges of background were quite wide. Also because of the background around, it's framing the flower. So what I've been doing, and I thought, okay, I can turn the camera on. I couldn't turn the camera on in this stage where I was trying to fix this flower because I needed to be alone. <laughs> I was like in deep thought. <laughs> couldn't be bothered with recording. But now I'm comfortable with what I've done, and uh, I still have the center to deal with, and that's going to be very easy. Something, a circle, maybe a button. The little hole got smaller too, and I did trim it just to make it, I don't know, it was like a hot mess, and I didn't want all that thickness in the center. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going around with background fabric, same as we do with a crazy quilt, until I have a big enough square piece where I can cut this into a square. And then that will be my flower top, you know, the top of my flower. And then I'm going to need to come up with a stem because I'm pretty determined to make a stem. I don't know why, but obviously I'll need a long rectangular piece with a stem that I could do sewn curves or, because I kind of want curves, or maybe I could do top stitching, I don't know. I might go with a straight line when I get to that point. And then I want two leaves, I guess. So I'm almost at the point where I can cut uh, a square out of this, but I need something here in this corner so I could find like a triangular piece and, or I could just keep building with uh, pieces of strips like this. So, one more and then trim. Let me sew this on. All right, I just added this. I didn't trim anything off yet. And you know, that might be enough because, let's see, I think I have enough. I don't know, I'm going to add another piece up here. Well, let me just trim this, hang on. Let's see how this comes out if I go like this and then See, I don't need it to be this wide on this end, so let's go like this. I'm just trying to decide what I want to do. I have a pin here because that's the bottom of the flower. Yeah, I'm going to add a piece right there. Do I have a triangle that I could add? I do. I'm going to put that on. I think that I'm done adding. See, it looks, I don't know, it just looks a little bit better. Now, I do want to remind you guys, this is not a tutorial. 
this particular sampler quilt. That's why I called it a series. It, it's basically you watching me get excited if I do something that I like, or you get to watch me suffer when <laughs> I don't like how something is coming out. But so far, I'm very happy with this whole process, and I'm anxious to do this block, and then I'm going to start planning the smaller pieces to fill in the... Um, you know, the quilt with these other big blocks that I have. So go check out the other videos if you haven't yet. And I'm going to square this up and then I'm going to start thinking about my stem. I discovered something. To um, make it kind of even, I have a line showing here in the center of my flower and it happens to be the number eight line. So if I cut on the one line, that's seven inches between, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, I can do that. So if I cut on the number one line and on the number 15 line, that's going to give me my block with the flower centered. So let me do that. My ruler isn't quite long enough, so I... Well, let's see. Instead of turning that, I know I need the 15. So uh, when your ruler isn't long enough, you just do the best you can with, like, kind of aiming toward the line, and then you move the ruler up when you get there, like that. Ooh! Now, let's do the same in the other direction. Let's go on the 8 line, and now I'm going to line up my edge that I know is nice and straight. And we have the same thing happening. Okay, so I can't cut on the one. Where the hell is the one? Oh yeah, it's there. <laughs> All of a sudden I couldn't tell. So I could cut. Mm. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit narrower and that's fine because it's going to be rectangular. So I'm just trying to figure out if I want to really cut it down or Hmm. Okay, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Let's see if I can do that. Six and a half away from my center. So that's got to go like that. All right, six and a half in the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Wow, I have a nice flower block. I'm so proud of myself. I really like this. Now, I thought it was going to be going this way, but I've already determined that this is my bottom, so it's going to be this way. But it will still be rectangular because I'm going to have that stupid stem <laughs> that's going to take up two feet of the quilt. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if I should just stop at a flower block. I didn't know it was going to be ginormous. And this is really, really big. And I don't want just a little short, stubby stem. Let me think about it. All right, I'm still in the thinking stage, and I don't want to overthink things. I was going to use a fabric that I bought, but it didn't really have any of the colors here. I was going to use a piece of fabric to make the stem, but I still have uh, a long strip like this, and some of the, the fabric, you know, is in the flower. So I like that. This would be narrower once I attach it, and this may not be too hard to make a curve. I just don't know if I want a curve or not. And then for leaves, I don't know what leaves look like on flowers, but in my world, I can have a flower that has like leaves here and then leaves here, just to fill up some of this space. And I was going to cut from this fabric, which has some really weird prints, and some of these could look like leaves. But I don't know. I would have to, you know, <sighs> probably, like, have those be applique. But, jeez, those would make some really cool leaves. They really would. 
but I don't have any double-sided fusibles, so I don't have a way to make it easy. I could still just top stitch on top and go around, but I'm not really sure I want to do that. So I have to rethink that whole plan. Because I'd hate, I'm, not, I'm already, I can't put it down. I would hate to lose those little like feathery things. So I would have to cut around. I could cut straight lines and then just start putting my border. I could do that. I could try one and see how it looks. All right, let me do that. Okay, I cut one out, just a rough cut. And I'm just going to cut straight lines Let's see. Gee, I didn't leave as much seam allowance there as I wanted. And then... I'm just going to um, make this square so I can, you know, add a piece. Let me see. I'll need to cut some more strips, but like... I don't know matter which way I put this, it's not going to work right. Sew that there and then open and then I'll cut like this and then I can add a piece there. I think I'm going to add corners to each one of these, top and bottom, and then I will add strips to the side. I'll be right back. I'm going to do that. I just want to show you what I'm doing because I know some of you can follow along. So I had a strip here. Where was that piece? I don't know, but it was long. And then I just followed this line to trim. Now, I want this to be squared off, so I'm just going to... Hmm. Right there. Now I'm going to follow this line. And now I need to add a piece here, and then I can trim that. And then we'll have like a square, a square top. We will. So now I have this, and I can just uh, square that up roughly. Oops, I'm going to need a little piece here. Or I could trim. Will that be enough? Yes. I'm going to just do it with my scissors. There. So see, I have a squared off top. I think this might work. It doesn't really go with the flower, but I think it'll be cool. Now let me do the same on this end. And now I have this. And I don't know which way I will make up or down. And now I just have to add some background to the sides. So I'm going to be adding a strip but I think I'm going to want some lines in it. So I will do my trick of, let's just pretend, you know, I need a wider strip than this, but let's just pretend if this is what I was adding there, I might fold and sew just to make it have a line in there. I like the lines. I'm going to do that and then I will show you. Look, I found a scrap with a line in it and that will be wide enough. I'll just have to square it up a little. I'm going to attach that. I have one of the leaves. I'm really happy with this. I didn't have to trim it yet because it's going to obviously be like tilted from the stem. So then I'm just going to have to fill in the background, you know, with background wedges. And uh, again, you know, square it up. I was wondering if I was going to go with, you know, another print for the other side, but, but they're not the same size, so I'm just going to do the two leaves like this one. I'm going to like that. And then I'm still undecided with the stem. I could go with this, or I might just cut some of this. I don't know. We'll figure that out when we get there. I really don't know what I'm doing before I sit down. So <laughs> that's the part that I like. So I'm going to cut another one of these out and make another one like this. And um, that might be it for tonight. I don't like to do too much because then I start to get tired and then I start to get frustrated. But I will finish this. Let me show you. I'm done. 
block number two is wider and I'm leaving it that way. Um, I had to cut some more background. I have to go get some more background because I don't think I'm going to have enough. And, uh, you know, I don't know how these are going to go yet, so I might have to add to this one, or I can trim this one later if I want. I think I'm going to stop here for tonight because I, you know, don't like to just do too much. Like I said, I start to get tired, and then I screw up, and then I get frustrated. Now, I know you can't see, but I'm looking at it, and I think with a stem, and I think I'm going to go with a, just a straight line, just to make it easy for this time so I don't have to take a chance of more frustration. <laughs> I think that's going to work out well and it doesn't have to be like a super long stem maybe like that to here somehow attach these leaves to it and uh, that's going to be a gigantic block as you can see it's going to be that that whole big rectangle all right, I hope I can work on this tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, and I upload these on Saturday night. Um, I should have time on Friday to do that, so I'll see you tomorrow. I am back, and it is Saturday, not Friday, so I won't have time to finish this block in this episode, but I will for the next episode, and then we'll start uh, some other blocks in the next episode also. Here's what I have decided. I do indeed want to try the curvy stem and here's how I'm going to do it without much waste in case I hate it. First of all, let's get these guys out of here. So I'm going to need to cut a curvy strip at the same time that I'm cutting the background so that the curves match. The background, I'm not going to cut it very wide because I want to piece it anyway so that way if I hate the stem I'm not wasting much fabric. Well, I wouldn't be wasting it anyway because I could always use that in a crumb quilt, that piece. I think I want the stem probably, you know, kind of long. Let me just, uh, first let me cut a piece of background. Oh, and I am thinking that I'm going to take the stem out of this fabric but I'm going to cut it this way so we get a lot of these colors. I think that will be cool. There's always so many decisions to make. I could have my stem be here and have it incorporate all these diagonals, or I could have it here where it's mostly green but little specks of color. I think I like this better because this is called small stuff, this quilt. And it's funny because it's the piecing that is small, you know, small pieces. The quilt blocks are huge. <laughs> that part is not small. I think I'm going to want the stem from this part. So I need to cut a strip. This is going to give me a lot of really awesome leftovers for um, either my penny auctions or for my crumb stash. Take off the salvages. So it's going to be something like this, but because I'm cutting curves, I needed wide enough fabric to play with. And I made it probably longer than I need. Again, I want fabric to play with. So what I will do is I'm going to get my mat and I'm going to just cut a very long, slow curve. I'm going to move it over a little bit. You just need to make sure that you cut through both layers at the same time. Where is my rotary cutter? Here's the scary part. Now when I do curves, I always start with at least a, a half inch or an inch straight and then I start my curve and then I end with about an inch of straight. It just makes it so much easier to anchor your fabric when you start sewing because you have a little bit of straight. Because when you're cutting uh, curves, you'll see, I'll show you how it, when you put right sides together it doesn't match at all. You have to ease the fabric the entire time you're sewing. So just long, not very curvy is easier than like, you know, gigantic curves. 
it can be to the point where it's even impossible. You can't do too much curving. So I'm going to go like here. And you want both right sides facing up. And I am on right sides, I hope. Gee, it's so hard to tell with that mottled color. Yes, I am. Okay, I'm going straight. Can you even see what I'm doing? Yes, you can. Now I'm just going to cut like, whoops, a gradual curve. And it wants to bunch up a little bit. Am I cutting? Yes, I am. I'm lifting every now and then so it doesn't bunch. Long, gradual curve. And then I'm going to end straight. So I take this piece off. Come on. It might be stuck here and there because it's hard to cut freehand like that. One more little sticky part right there. And so now I, I can take this bottom part out. We will be using it again and again. I have some little sticky parts here. That's okay. Whoops. Shit. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut that. All right. So this part will be used in a minute. But now we have this. That when I sew, the curves are perfectly matched. But you'll see that when I turn this over onto this, you're like, how the hell do you sew those together? Well, like I said, I have to start here and I sew a couple stitches and then you just have to take a few stitches at a time and you just keep matching up the edges. It's really not that hard to do once you try it. You don't really want to stretch it. You just want to keep matching up the edges and when you're all done, you open it up and it lays flat. So let me go do that. This came out so nice. I didn't end up exactly even, but that's okay. It's laying nice and flat. Look at that nice curve. There's the back side. Very happy with this. Now I need to cut the stem on this side. And I know I will be losing a half inch seam allowance well, a quarter of an inch on the green and a quarter of an inch on this guy. What was I supposed to do with this guy? Oh yeah, that was what was underneath. Now obviously, geez, you know what? Oh, that's the same curve. I can use this as the pattern and just cut along that same line and that will give me, you know, a perfectly curved stem. I love this. How wide do I want the green part? I don't think it really matters because this is all just crazy anyway. But let's just see for the heck of it. I kind of like this thickness. How cool that's going to be with... Oh, oh my god, this is so fun! Um, I like this, so I'm going to pull it out about a quarter of an inch for the seam allowance. So let's just make it a little bit wider. Let me stay on the mat here. Pull that out a little bit more. And actually, we don't really do like a quarter of an inch when sewing curves, more like maybe an eighth of an inch because you want to kind of stay close to the edge. Just make a long curve and try it. I don't really have a good way to show you up close I need a way to have the camera like just aiming right at my needle. I will try to do that. Never. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut the curve. Oh, goodness. Ooh, I think I did a very good job if it cut through. This is a good time to have a fresh blade and a not-so-fucked-up mat. <laughs> it would work so much better. 
Okay, we might be stuck a little bit here and there. No, we're going to make it except for one little place right there. And there. You know, when your mat starts having just deep grooves, it doesn't cut good anymore. But I like this mat. I've tried others and I just, I, I get so attached to things. All right, same thing. I am going to flip this this way. And I'm telling you, it it's really not hard. If you take a few stitches, leave the needle in the fabric, and then you just adjust a little bit, and then you take a couple more stitches and you adjust, and it all works. This is almost perfection. You know what I wanted to do that I forgot to do? I wanted some lines on my background. Before I sewed this part on, I wanted to make some diagonal lines. Now I can't at this point, well, eh, I don't know. I might be able to if I wanted to just start there. But no, I don't want it to pucker at my stem. But other than that, ugh, makes me so sad. But that's okay, because I don't know how narrow this will be cut. And I can have, you know, I'm going to have other piecing. Because somehow this has to be filled in. So, other than that, the curve. Oh my God, I just love it. I'm so glad that I attempted the curve. Like I said, I have sewn curves before, but nothing this narrow, and I just didn't know how it would turn out. I do have a little tiny bit of puckering. That's all good. I am very, very happy. I think it was this way. It doesn't matter. Since... I'm happy I'm going to end on this note. So next time, and I might put some of this together, you know, before the next episode, because like I said, it's not really a tutorial as much as you're watching me struggle and be happy. <laughs> but I'm going to figure out, and like I said, this is going to have to be slanted. I might have one like up here and one down. I think that's going to be so super cool, and I will be filling in. Well, it's going to have to be a little bit wider. We'll see. I'm just going to be ending up with a nice rectangular block of some kind, and I think that'll be awesome. And I do love that the stem has just all those little tiny bits of color and not all the diagonal lines. Incredibly happy. And then I have to deal with the center of the flower too. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of Sampler Quilt Sunday. And I promise you that the next quilt I do will be something that you can follow along. It's going to be very simple. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.